I was always a huge fan of the Time Crisis games. I actually even managed to beat the first Time Crisis in the arcade once. And it took a ton of quarters and a lot of patience, but I managed to beat that bastard down. And now I'm back for more with Time Crisis Crisis Zone for the PS2. To get the most out of this game, you need to have the Gun Con too. It's a light gun with a USB connector. I still have the box to this game because it has a wiring diagram inside of it. And after a while, I forget how to hook this thing up. But I also need to have this wired up so that way I can record my game footage. Look at this, I have the gun plugged into the PS2 and then this yellow thing that I have to send into the DVD recorder, but I also want to be able to use it so it has to go to the TV. But I want to see what I'm recording, so I have to put all of this to a second TV that I have on the floor just so I know I'm actually doing anything. Well, hooking that up was a fucking mess, but now, let's play some Time Crisis. Time Crisis. Crisis Zone. The story mode will give you the basic arcade feel for this game. There isn't much of a story to tell. You're some sort of police officer, and you shoot people. That's all you need to know. You proceed through this game by ducking in and out of cover and firing at your enemies. While you're behind cover, you'll reload your gun, and you're safe from most enemy hits. I apologize for the flashing on screen, it is very annoying, but it has something to do with how the light gun detects the hits, so I can't remove it. Normally in the arcade version of this game, you'd be stepping on and off of a pedal to go in and out of cover. In this, the Gun Con 2 has a button on each side that you can press. While you're behind your shield, you're invulnerable to enemy attacks. Knowing how to do this is an important skill in this game because your enemies are going to be shooting at you a lot. In some of these later stages, it's hard to know when to come out of cover because you just have so many attacks coming at you in a flurry. But this was an arcade game, so it was designed to take those quarters out of your pocket. Just remember, this is called Time Crisis for a reason. You can't hang out behind your shield all day, or you will take a hit when the clock runs out. The story to this game isn't all that good or interesting, but I never went to an arcade looking for a good story, so it isn't a huge downfall here. The arcade is always about gameplay, and Time Crisis delivers non-stop action to keep you satisfied. You know, I really wish that Microsoft would take a few notes from this game. All I need is a very simple peripheral that only adds 10 to 20 dollars to the cost, and I get to enjoy the most out of the game. Unlike with the Kinect, this doesn't have any facial recognition, voice recognition, and I don't think that Edward Snowden's going to be blowing the lid off the NSA's GunCon 2 program anytime soon. But if you don't have the GunCon 2, you can still play this game using a regular PlayStation controller, and it acts a lot like the US version of Resident Evil Survivor. But playing the game like this really sucks. Also a lot like the US version of Resident Evil Survivor. The game starts with three areas to choose from. Which order you do them in is entirely up to you and doesn't really matter, but this feature gives it an authentic arcade feel. It's too bad that the Gun Con 2 doesn't have that cool reciprocating slide feature. I always loved in the arcade, holding the gun on my hip, taking out the machine gun and shouting like Scarface, SAY HELLO TO MY LITTLE FRIEND! Yeah, I got a lot of weird looks from people, but the way I saw it, I was just giving them some entertainment that didn't cost quarters. One thing I didn't get about the arcade versions of these games is that the guns were weird colors. Look at this, baby blue and neon pink. Those are like the colors you'd paint a five-year-old's bedroom. Well, despite how emasculating it might be to shoot somebody with a neon pink gun, it's still a lot of fun to play this game. In Crisis Zone, there's three main guns that you can use. The handgun, the machine gun, and the shotgun. There are other special weapons that you can get, like a flamethrower or a grenade launcher, but these are unique to certain areas and you can't carry them with you. One thing I found a little strange about this game is that the machine gun is the default weapon. In all the other games, the trusty pistol is what you start with. You actually have to unlock the pistol in this game as a special weapon. What's up with that? I know I shouldn't be bitching about having a better gun than usual, but unless you've played the arcade game, it's kind of hard to explain. You beat those games using just your trusty handgun, with the occasional better weapon for support. But in Crisis Zone? No way. You start with a machine gun, so you just feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger mowing people down at the end of Commando. 
don't break radio silence until they see me. How will I know? Because all fucking hell is going to break loose. The real key to success in this game is getting down the timing. Once you've mastered ducking back into cover whenever you hear this, you've pretty much mastered the game. Same is basically true for the arcade version as well. Of course, the occasional obstacle, one of these damn ninjas, might be the exception to the rule. Continue. Fuck these guys! You know, I usually don't notice these kinds of things in a video game, but I'm kind of getting a really racist vibe from this one. I'm serious, look at this, all the enemies that aren't wearing full body armor are black. Every ninja in the game, even the main bosses. Usually I feel like people are just exaggerating when they say things like this, but it really seems like every enemy is black. There's no way that could have been on purpose, right? I mean, this game's old, but it's not that old. Well, there had to be at least one bad guy that was white. Oh right, that crazy general that shoots his balls in your face. What was that guy's name again? The complex has been taken over by a terrorist group called the URDA, led by Derek Lynch. Derek Lynch? I'm sure that's a coincidence. What, was the name Admiral Hate Crime already taken? It's hard to believe that a game this blatantly racist got released and nobody noticed. At any rate, you really do have to watch out for the ninjas in this game. They sneak in attacks when you're least expecting it, and they rarely give you a warning. The good news is that you can shoot their grenades out of the air for a quick save, and they don't usually take a lot of hits to defeat. After you've beaten the game, try out the story mode special. Finally you'll unlock the handgun, plus you'll also have a lot of fun running around with the shotgun in your arsenal. There's also plenty of challenges and trials to keep you swearing at your TV for a long time. Defeating these trials and playing through the game again will give you more life and more credits that you can use to help you out while you're playing the game. One of the greatest features about the Time Crisis games in the arcade was that you could play it with two people. A friend could be standing next to you helping you play along the way, and the same is true in Crisis Zone. You have to unlock the ability to do it, but once you do, you can play with not just one gun, but two. Playing with two people will really speed up this game, but let's be honest, if you've got two guns, you know what you're gonna do. Akimbo! It may not be very practical to use two guns by yourself, but you feel incredibly destructive, so it's worth it. For being a home adaption of an arcade game, Crisis Zone is actually pretty good. It still has all the foibles you'd expect from an arcade game. Not enough credits. Too many credits. Story sucks. The game's too short. But despite all of these things, it's actually still pretty fun. I wouldn't recommend you buy this game if you don't have the right peripherals or if you don't have an old TV. But if you can get set up properly, this game is a great way to kill an afternoon.